My name is James Foreman Jr. This is Kung Fu Happy number two. This is my last video for the day until after I get to work and find another topic to talk about. So I pretty much just made like four racist rant videos. And this is like um, my conclusion and my apologies. All right. As a personal multiculturalist, I like to say that I do not have the right to be a racist. I like to point that out. I like to enforce this shit every fucking day. When I see people, I don't see them by the color of their skin. I do see that literally, but I like to get to know people before I just hang that umbrella of judgment over their head. Because not all white people are members of the KKK, and not all black people are dumb, ignorant ass niggers. And not all Asian people are gooks, spicks, and guaylo fuck toys. All right, we are all human beings. We all have a heart, we all bleed, and we all get our feelings hurt on some level or another. Now, if I have hurt, offended, or pissed off anybody with those four videos that I've made, let me be the first to say, I'm sorry, and I'm not sorry. I'm sorry because it offended you. I'm not sorry because it's the fucking hardcore truth. And like I said, this is why I only give people 99.9 .9 because some people can't handle the whole 1,000. I've probably lost a few followers with these videos. And if I have, again, I'm sorry, not sorry. I've always said to you, to my 25 followers that I had, which was 12 at the time, <laughs> that I will give you guys 99.9. .9. The second that you can't take the whole 1,000 is probably the second that you probably don't want to be one of my fans, followers, or whatever the hell it is you want to do. Now, unlike very popular actors, which I am not, I am an actor. I'm just not a discovered actor. YouTube is not blowing up for me overnight like I wrote in my graphic novel, Love 13, because that's a pipe dream, and for some of y'all, it does work, and for me, it has not. I don't blame YouTube. It's nobody's fault but mine, because I can't get out and do the things that I want to do. I can't make kung fu movies anymore. But at least, not until they clear me. I miss doing kung fu. You have no idea how depressing it is to not be able to get up and kick someone in the face every day and make money doing so. But with this hip replacement, it's highly unlikely, and this hip needing to be replaced, it's highly unlikely that someone's really going to give me the chance to make the movies I want to make. But I can make scary movies. Just kill me in the first 10 minutes because I can't run. No. Unless you get a stunt guy to run in my place, I can teach them my moves and you guys can take this off and pace me somewhere. I'm sure that's not going to happen either, but... This is an apology video. I'm extremely apologetic for the shit that comes out my mouth. But I will not apologize for the fact that if it came out my mouth, I meant it on some level or another. And here's the thing about the truth. A lot of people don't like the truth because they can't handle it. A lot of people say they want the truth, but know deep down inside that the truth will probably fuck them up. Now, here's the thing on that. If you've said it, and I'm going to be completely 175% honest with you on this. A thousand times over, if you said it, you thought it, and you meant it on some level or another, or it would not have flown out of your mouth. You might not have meant to word it the way you worded it. You know, like me picking on The Rock, getting all of the roles. Hey, I meant that shit. He's getting all of the roles. The Rock's hot. The Rock's going to make that money, and people are going to go rush to see him. They're not going to rush to go see tiny little kung fu guy from Charlottesville, Virginia, who's five foot three compared to big time Miami motherfucker who's six five and solid muscle. Okay? So they're not gonna they're not gonna choose me over him. That shit's not gonna happen. You know. Now maybe I could play mini Scorpion King, you know, which would be cool. We don't look nothing alike, but you know, I could play mini Scorpion King. I'm smaller, <laughs> you know. But Scorpion King's also one of my favorite movies, so way to go rock. Wish I would have been the guy who got to play with um, Kelly Who's Breasts. But anyway, moving on. This is an apologetic video because of the simple fact that everything I said, I pretty much meant. You know, whether it was racial, whether it was hurtful, it was the fucking truth. And the thing about the truth is a lot of people think they can handle the truth until it slaps them in the face. I'm one of those people too. I'm pretty sure I can handle the truth. I might not like that shit, but I'd rather hear it and get that shit over with than have to dig through dirt and secrets and shit to find. Just be honest with me and get the shit over with. Because I can adapt to truth. 
I can adapt to the hurt. It will eventually go away. But I don't want to have to find out 18 or 20 years down the road that everything was a fucking lie. I'd rather have that lie slap me dead in the face right then and there than I don't raise some child is not mine, which they're going to be mine regardless. If I have a future child, when you listen to this and I find out you're not mine, you're still going to fucking be mine. Regardless of blood or not, if I raised you, your ass is mine. And that's all to that. But that shit better not happen to any woman that I'm with. Because I'm an honest man. If you're going to cheat on me, be honest about it. Don't do that shit, get knocked up because I'm a good guy. You want me to raise your kid? No, I want to raise my kid. Not your side, motherfucker's kid. Mine. If I'm putting in the work, the kid needs to be mine. And find out that the kid's not mine. We're done. Period. And on that note, before I finish this apology video, it should be mandatory by government law so that me and the girl that I have a baby with aren't sitting on Maury or any of those other famous talk shows that I like so much. Because God only knows how I'm going to be like, yeah, I want to stay with her forever. Nah, you can't say that. Because, you know, sometimes you can destroy love. Whether this person loves you or not, you can destroy it with a simple act of lying. And it's like, well, you know, because I'll be the first to tell you, you know, we can have a good relationship as long as you are honest with me. Am I going to cheat on you? Not if you give me what I want when I want it. No, if, if we're constantly having sex, because I love sex, who doesn't? Then you ain't got to worry about me cheating on you. If I roll over and my shit's ready to go and you keep saying no, it's only going to be so many times but I can go to the bathroom with a Playboy book and rub one off. Eventually, I'm going to need the real deal. So if you're not down with that, then it's not going to work. And if you're going to lie to me about it, and you're actually giving it to someone else instead of giving it to me, and then you come home and you tell me, honey, I'm, I'm a couple of weeks pregnant, you know, and me being the dumbass loving man that I am, follow you through thick and thin through all this shit, and then 20 years later, come out, well... You got three kids and only one of them is actually yours. You know, um, that's going to be a fucking problem. I'm not going to take it out with the kids. They will still be my kids. But as far as me and the woman, we're done. We're straight fucking done because you don't have the right to fucking do that. You don't. And if you're not woman enough to accept your flaws and your lies and your faults, then you don't deserve me. I'm not going to raise somebody else's kids unknowingly. Now, if I know about it, like, if I meet you and you're pregnant and I continue to pursue a career relationship with you, that's on me. Because the next one better be mine. Simple as that. If the next one's not mine or you can't bear any more children, we might have a fucking problem. Because I'm raising your child and this other asshat's child, and I want one of my own, but you can't give me anymore because of the damage done. You know, that's not fucking cool. And I know you're not going to pay a chick to have my baby and you're going to want to raise it because it's not really going to be a part of you. It's just going to be a part of me. And people don't adapt or adjust that well. Which is why I'm going to say this and this should be a law from country to country, universally around the world, that DNA should be mandatory. From the second the baby is born, it should be the first thing taken. You know, snip a little bit of hair, Grab the daddy, take him off to the side. The mother should should not have a problem consenting to this, especially if she's not cheating. But DNA off the jump should be a legal thing. It should be a legal thing. As soon as the baby is born, it should be a legal thing. Like, look, DNA, if it's not mine, I'm not sticking around. I know that sounds really fucked up, but you don't lie to people. You should not lie to people. I mean... If you're cheating on me and I'm cheating on you, we should both be honest about it. And if we want to stay together, then we should be swingers with one rule and one rule only. I can't get anybody else pregnant. And you can't get pregnant by anyone else. And we could be the greatest swingers ever to exist. But if you're going to lie and get pregnant and then say it's mine, we have a fucking problem. I don't, I'm going to be honest. And this is going to sound completely fucked up, but it's the truth. Because I've been cheated on so many times in relationships that I've been in that... I'm almost used to it, but I have one rule, and I say this to every girl I'm with. If you're going to fucking cheat on me, be honest, and don't get pregnant by nobody else. Because I can't stop you. 
honestly, truly the guy. And if you're a man out there and you think for a New York minute that you can stop your girlfriend from fucking giving up the pussy to someone else, you are wrong. Because it's her pussy. It's not yours because you're married. It's not yours because you're fucking here every night. No, it is not yours. It will always be hers because it's attached to her body. Now, if she's going to go sleep with somebody else, it's nothing you can do about it but accept it. And that works for you women, too. If your man's not getting it from you, he's going to go get it from somewhere else. So, y'all might as well just be honest about the shit and get it over. Because truth be told, men are weak. Alright? Y'all may think we're strong, and we may be strong physically. But right here and down here, I'm going to tell you, the hardest part about being a man is resisting a woman who's got her ass in your face. And if you're an ass man, it's even more harder to resist. But if she's popping that thing and making the booty pop and shaking it all in front of you and stuff, it's going to be real hard for your man to say no. Because even if he loves you, that doesn't mean that he won't cheat. It just means it makes it more difficult for him to actually do it. Real men will fight that urge. We will. We will fight that urge. But eventually, if we are persistent enough, we will probably give in just because we're weak. Or just because you refuse to give us the booty when we want it. And men, most of us, unless we're exceptionally tired, we want it every night. I'm sorry. You ladies might not want it every night, but we men, we damn sure do. So again, this is my apology to everything I said and to everything before that on my post Charlottesville racist city. You know, truth of the matter is, you don't want your man to cheat. Fuck his brains out every night. Even if he doesn't want it, fuck him. Because the only way he's going to stay is that you fuck him. Now, if you really love each other, he's going to stay. But if you really love him and you're fucking him all the time, he's going to enjoy it. Unless he's a chauvinist dog who just can't get enough pussy. You know, and there are people like that. And there are people who are dreadfully honest. I fall into that category of being brutally and dreadfully honest. But I apologize for that right now. And as I said before, I'll say it again. If something comes off your mouth, you meant it on some level or another, or you would not have said it. I'm James Williams Jr. This is Comfort Effect number two. I'll make more videos later. Be seeing you.